Hello there. Welcome to another What's Up Wednesday. Yes, another week has gone by. This is episode 15. That would be 15 consecutive weeks. We have a huge show to uh, for you tonight. No special guests, but a big topic came in from a viewer question on the Travato 59G floor plan. You do not want to miss, miss that. My name is Scott. Welcome to Go Small, Live Large, my YouTube channel dedicated to the Class B RV lifestyle. Really appreciate you joining, whether you're on the live session here and or are watching the replay. I was a delight to have you here. Um, every Wednesday, 6 p.m., we do What's Up Wednesday. It's a weekly van life RV show to help you be a better RVer, whether you're no time, sometime, or full time like me. Since February 2019, been living in my Winnebago Travato 59 GL. That's like 26 months now of living living in this 21 camp uh, 21 foot camper van. We have a huge show for you tonight. Take a look at some of this content coming up. Uh, we're coming at you really um, first right off the bat. It, we're coming live from uh, Spartanburg, South Carolina. Let me zoom in here so you can see this. Where in the heck is Spartanburg, right? Um, it's on the kind of the border of uh, North Carolina and South Carolina. And what makes Spartanburg really cool, in fact, I'm going to go there tomorrow. BMW has a huge factory here. They build their um, their X5, X3 products. Um, they deliver 1,500 vehicles a day out of that factory. So we might even make a video of that, see, see how much they can capture. So come out you live. By the way, it's pretty cold here. Somebody's saying it's snowing. Uh, this could work. Kind of. Um, so it's going to be pretty cold. It's going to be 33 degrees tomorrow night. Um, and the pollen is crazy right here. It's raining yellow pollen. Um, so that's no fun. <laughs> um, so no special guest tonight. You just got me only. It's going solo. But next week, we've got a big show. We've got Heather, uh, the tax queen. She's coming on. She's a full-time RVer. And she's going to answer uh, RVing questions related to taxes and tax accounting. So you don't want to miss that. Uh, that is next week, uh, the 28th uh, at 6 p.m. Central. Also coming up uh, next month, we have our uh, paid partner, Embassy RV, is doing a YouTube Live on on Thursday, May 13. So if you're looking for a Class B RV, um, you're kind of not finding what you want, and you want something uh, really innovative, uh, Embassy RV does things very differently. So you want to mark that on your calendars and check that out. Because uh, that's coming at you live, and um, upcoming guests we got thir Kevin thirty to wake up. He'll be in Hawaii by the time he gets on. Uh, we got Coachman teed up for June, and we've got Clear Two O, the quality of water in your in your uh, RV. So you don't want to miss that. And if you haven't seen my recent video um, on having a pizza delivered to your van, it's kind of a fun little video, and the pizza is really pretty good. Um, if you get tired of eating your own food, this is a nice way to do it. And um, we have question of the week. This is the big one this week. And this is comes from a viewer um, asking about uh, the Winnebago Travato 59G, the 2022 uh, changes to their floor plan. And holy cow, do I have some strong opinions. It's really more fact than opinion on their changes. So we're going to dive into that tonight. And RV news, we've got some really interesting RV news. You might you want to see that. And viewer recommendation of the week, you're going to want to see that. It's pretty cool. And oops, and then we of course have song of the week and pick pick of the week, and really it's all about your live Q and A questions. So get those bad boys rolling in, and um, I just want to thank you again for joining us, and it's going to be a great show tonight. And whether you're watching the replay or otherwise, give it a thumb up that helps others find this the the, um, the channel. That's really helpful, and just lets me know you like it, which is really really awesome. Where are you watching from? I'm super curious about that, and. Um, Again, I'm coming at you from uh, South Carolina. We've been in South Carolina for a few weeks. And um, let's just dive into some of the questions here we got coming in already. Uh, so let me scroll up here just a little bit. Um, this is a, this is great here. So Beyond Intentions, hey, uh, here's white stuff on your Travato. Yeah, I guess spring has sprung. I talked to my boss yesterday in Chicago, and it was snowing. In Chicago, first half of April, you always get a big snowfall. Well, big being an inch or two um, on the daffodils. It's pretty funny. Um, you folks are uh, way up there. They're getting white stuff. Um, look at this one. This is a huge deal here. Um, <laughs> uh, RH put a down payment on one. We'll pick it up in July. That is not too far away, by the way. Congratulations. Really proud of you. Um, curious, RH, let us know what you actually ended up buying. I'm going to be super curious about that. Uh, Munch from Massachusetts. Hi, Dan. Thanks for oh, the new dad. Oh. Child the family, maybe. <laughs> That's awesome. Hey, if you got a question, this is the format we like to use. And um, we're kind of following Kevin 30 to wake up his uh, his format, which is three stars, three asterisks, followed by three question marks. It just kind of pops out of the chat here more a little more readily. What well, pretty good to see you. 
upstate New York. Good to see you. Let's get some questions coming in. Um, hey, one of my favorite places on earth, Nashville. Terry, thanks for joining. Appreciate that. Uh, and, and yeah, I'm pretty excited. Spartanburg. I've, I've been here once a long time ago when I worked for Apple and, um, it's a, it's a cute small town near Greenville. Um, I'm rolling out of here into Charlotte over the weekend and into, um, uh, Moxville, um, on Monday next week. And then off into, I think not quite sure yet. Um, but we're, we're, we have a tentative plan to do a channel meetup, uh, next week. So stay tuned. Look at this Napa Valley. All right. Uh, let's see. I saw a question here. Um, when do you, this is okay. Here we go right here. Um, when are you coming to the South Carolina coast? Well, we kind of made it, but not really to the coast. Um, spent a fair amount of time in Savannah, Georgia, um, and then moved inland to um, um, what's the, uh, Columbia. I don't know why I can remember that. Uh, Columbia, South Carolina. So I'm not, not going to Charleston. have been there before. Um, it's a lovely town, but due to Volta uh, brand ambassador duties, uh, Winnebago trainings, I'm uh, having to go inland and kind of do this route. But I've never been in the van in this part of the country before. So this is all new territory for me in the van. Uh, yeah, this is becoming a, a hot topic. Hi, Phil. Um, I've just taken a bunch of um, Zyrtec. So I apologize if I'm looking like I've been crying. It's really just the pollen's killing me. And drying me out terrible. Apologize. Uh, Phil wants to know, hello, Scott. Have you posted a video on your shower modification? Can I discuss what modifications you made? Thanks. Um, I have not posted the video yet. I'm kind of on, um, I hope to have it out in the next few weeks. Um, I'm getting lots of questions about it. And I am using it so often. It's probably the best modification one could make if they plan to use their, 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 their 59 G floor plan in particular for showering. It's, it's so, so much better than the... OEM equipment that comes in it. Um, so watch for that. Um, I promise it's coming. It's not going to be a much, really, a, it will not be a how to video. It'll be more about what I did and why video. So um, if you go to the um, a, a Facebook page, Travada Owners and Wannabes, my understanding is there's a posting there of the parts and what have you. And that's where the um, audience angel Terry um, lifted that information out, did the install in his van, and then helped me with mine. So coming soon, I promise. But um, if you have a 59G floor plan, you're going to want to do that right away because it's the best thing ever, ever, ever. Central Florida here. Yes, Endless Summer. Hi, Heath. In um, Endless Summer, Florida, pretty amazing. Uh, Columbus, yeah, spring has sprung, but it is uh, it is chilly a lot of places. Um, so he got the, oh, RL got the uh, 59GL 2022 with the extra battery. We were just talking about that today at the uh, Travado training I did, and good for you. Um, I wish I had that extra uh, core loaded. Um, so as you know, the, the Volta system has four core capacities. Mine has three of those core capacities loaded, and the National Park Foundation Edition had the fourth core. It adds about 30%, over 11,000 um, watt hours to, um, to, your, uh, to your rig. So congratulations. I'm super excited for you. That is awesome. Keep those questions rolling in. And uh, let's see, here's the shower mod. The faucet has been disconnected. No way. Um, the Winnebago Travado group is um, um, working on options. What I could do is put the show links tonight, the link to that, and see if it's still available. If you're saying it's been discontinued, that is super unfortunate. Oh my gosh. Um, that's really unfortunate. That's, that's true. Kentucky, look at this coming in. Florida Panhandle. Neil and Britt, what's up? Good to see you. Thank you for that. Uh, so we'll get on it. Um, six foot, so it's very tight. Um, are you talking about the ProMaster um, ceiling height? Not sure about that. Um, New Jersey. Um, spent a lot of time in New Jersey when I worked for Apple. Uh, so that was pretty exciting. Um, um, so um, O'Shea New Williams wants to know, what are your thoughts on the new ethos and lived in greenfield take your zyrtec um i took the zyrtec and it's it's working it's starting to work um uh lived in greenville that's cool i i need to go downtown greenville um the folks here say it's really cute town um, i've not been there yet um thoughts on the ethos i'm not sure what that you're gonna have to help me out with that uh portland yes yeah, the pollen is just incredible here. So this is kind of interesting. So when I went full-time uh, in February 2019, I had seasonal allergies like crazy. 
in stagnant terrestrial house life, spring kind of comes and goes in a series of maybe two or three weeks. So there's heavy pollen or something like that, right? Even in the fall, same deal. So that the seasons change, you're stationary, so it just kind of rolls over you. But I discovered last, or in, in 2019, February, as I was leaving Florida, I was in a constant mo uh, northward motion, and I was in a state of spring from February all the way until April uh, when I was in, in Chicago, and it just blew my head up so much. My nose inside actually got to the point where I went to go see a, a nose, ear, throat specialist person. He's like, um, you have seasonal allergies. You've just been rolling through spring for three months. Um, and so there was, there was nothing to do about it. So I just take my Zyrtec, I take, um, and just kind of roll with it, but I'm going through it right now again, which is kind of interesting. It is cool to see things come to life in stages as I roll North, but, uh, yeah, thank you for that. I love Portland, by the way, PDX all the way. Uh, Arkansas Tracy wants to know, when did you say channel meetup was? And I'm hoping to announce that probably tomorrow. I just need to check with uh, the Harvest Host site that we can host one there. Um, it's going to be in, well, I don't want to give it away yet. So I had, don't have it nailed down, but hopefully next week, um, is what it says. So it's going to be a short notice. You have to check my website and, um, we're working on ways to communicate better through, um, through the website. So, um, with events and some email, um, so it's a big, big deal for me. And, uh, so stay tuned. Uh, I check the website, but I'm hoping this next week we'll have our first one. And I'm hoping to get a whole bunch planned, including a channel campout, uh, Vanbury, as I call them, in October in Wallace, Idaho, one of the most fun times ever. And um, it's just a, a lovely, I just love doing that stuff with each and every one of you, if, if Beyond Intentions and some of the others in here that have uh, joined us for those uh, channel roundups, as I call them, or Van Breeze, um, it's just so much fun. We share so much and we learn so much. And it just puts, you know, name and face to these awesome names I see in the chat here tonight and beyond. So Gloria wants to know, this is a good question. Sorry, it dried me out. Um, Gloria wants to know, deciding between a 2022 GL versus an Echo, any opinions? Uh, yeah. Um, I would have you answer the question, why do you want RV? Um, really think through it very, very carefully. And the why you want to RV should dictate how RV systems enable your why, which then dictates which RV has those systems in it. They are very different RVs. Um, the Echo is a class C essentially. So it's big, it's boxy. It looks like an RV. It looks like something from the CIA, which I think is cool. It's got a, a very different floor plan, um, plenty of space for two people, much more insulated. Um, it has a lithium ion system, which uh, I would say if you're buying an RV, really, it's almost a must have in my opinion to have an advanced uh, lithium energy system. That one has a lithionics, which is good, very good. Um, whereas the GL would have a Volta, which I would argue is a little better. Um, but that's, that's a different topic. Um, the GL, it's a van, so you can go anywhere. Um, in fact, let me show you this. Um, here I will share my screen one second. Um, and the reason why you really want to think why you want to RV is because of the um, what the RV enables you to do. So this is a screenshot of, uh, let me share this with you, um, of a picture I took. Uh, Kyle and I were street camping in Columbia, South Carolina. Now he's got a class B plus or C minus, a, a region CRV. More videos coming about that very, very soon. You probably see that this weekend. Um, but I kind of fit in a typical parking spot there. You can see my front and the back and the fire hydrant there. And in an echo, first of all, you give yourself away. He gives himself away. There's a big RV. I mean, I'm clearly not um, in a standard van, but uh, the point being is that um, it's a very different way to RV. Um, I, it, and the chassis is um, a, a very different way to RV as well. And uh, it's it's just, um, what, what are you trying to do when you're RVing? Um, again, why, how, what is kind of the, the series of questions there. And what I would do is just really sit down with yourself, um, spend time in them. I know they're gonna be hard to see right now because all the dealers are uh, have no inventory. Um, and that's that's tough, but if you can get in one or watch a ton of whoops, watch a ton of videos, then that is going to be what you want to do. Um, and um, that's what I would recommend. Um, it's really a personal preference, 
based on why you want RV, which dictates in the end what kind of RV you get. Hopefully that helps a little bit. Maybe some others can help as well. Ah, look at this. Uh, new Nova with the generator. Ooh, with a generator. Cool. All right. That's cool. Sparks guy. Good job. I'm Nova. Uh, which one did you buy? There's a 20C, the 20... Oh, I should know those letters, but I don't know them that well. Uh, we've got uh, Coachman uh, Nick, who we met at the RV show in Tampa on docket to join the channel as a guest as what, What's Up Wednesday in June. So stay tuned for that. We're nailing that down right now. Uh, he's just a great guy. Congratulations on the Nova. Um, I love the Beyond, which is built on a Ford Transit chassis, but I just like the width of a Nova, which is based on a, a ProMaster chassis. I don't need the height. Um, I didn't want dual wheels. Um, so uh, congratulations on that. That is really great. Uh, so Neil, but some the um, the shower height. Yeah, that's we're going to talk about that tonight. Um, we're going to talk about that tonight. Uh, and here's Don. He has the same question. Do you know the height of the wet bath in the 2022 GGL? Um, I don't have the exact measurement, but I give you some pretty good numbers on it. Um, or I cover that in the in the viewer recommendation or the viewer question of the week. So stay tuned. Maybe we'll slip onto that here in just a minute. Um, good questions coming in. Keep them coming in, folks. Uh, it's ask out anything night. Uh, we have no guests tonight. Uh, so here's Steve. He's um, uh, bathroom height is 69 inches. Uh, that's the main problem with 2022. They made the bathroom slightly is being generous. I'll be honest. It's it's a very very different floor plan um and the bathroom is one of the most affected places uh, in, in the front lounge um so yeah thanks for that steven so this is interesting um sparks guy says do battery monitors measure actual battery storage level um are you referring to a volta system um because that's what i'm familiar with the most excuse me and the answer would be yes um, there's a state of charge gauge that is very visible because you they want it visible so you can monitor at any glance on um, the, um, the stat of charge. It's just like a gas gauge, right? Um, let me see if I can do this real fast too. Um, go flying through this tonight. Um, let's see how fast I can get here. Um, Volta also has a, let me share this with you. Um, can I do this? I don't think I can do this. I use my iPad as a second screen. So I, would have to get my phone connected. Anyway, Volta has an app that you can see the status of it. And right now it's Bluetooth. Um, they're working, my understanding is on a cloud connection. So from wherever you are, you can see the status of your battery um, in terms of the discharge, it's charging, how uh, long the current state of charge will last under current consumption rates. It's pretty cool. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Let's see. Um, so Sparks guy here has got another. These are great to topic tonight, folks. I'm really, really happy with uh, with this. Uh, as always, you're just an amazing crowd. Um, so Sparks guy says my AGM battery monitor level drops dramatically from the Truma. If I turn it off, the battery level returns where it had been. Um, are you talking about heat? Because if you're using a Truma system and you're not plugged into shore power and you're trying to do electric heat, I would say that's a big don't do that. Run propane. The Truma electric furnace um, is like, it consumes even a Volta system like this. I mean, it just it just consumes energy so fast. I ran my system um, when I was new at this, dead, um, thinking, hey, I got a Volta system, you know, Volta. Uh, um, it, in terms of not knowing what to do. And um, snob, really, I was a Volta snob. And um, I w was in a Walmart parking lot in Arkansas in March. I was headed to the um, RV Entrepreneur Summit, where this t-shirt comes from. And uh, Walmart, three in the morning, woke up freezing to death. And uh, my Volta system had run dead because I had electric heat on thinking, hey, I got a Volta system. Uh, the better thing to do is run propane um, if you're not plugged into shore power. And the electric heat, even plug when plugged into shore power, is only good to about 40 degrees because it does not get nearly as hot as the propane so that is my best practice is it plugged into shore power run electric heat down to 40 degrees anything below that you need to supplement with electric and propane or propane only to keep the rig warm and if you're definitely not running um plugged into shore power use your propane heat on the truma hopefully that helps keep those questions rolling in these are great topics tonight let's um there's been a number of questions let me just see where we are here quick um 
uh, we'll, we'll go a few more questions. How are we doing on time? Yeah, a few more questions, and then we'll talk about um, the RV um, headline news for the night. Um, this is kind of interesting stuff. You'll want to see this. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, yeah, the KL um, is thinking about the KL. That's a very popular floor plan. Everybody is copying it. <laughs> Everybody, meaning Thor, Coachman, um, Jayco. Um, varying degrees of quality. Um, it's nice because it's an open floor plan. That's why people like it. Open meaning it's just one room. You have two twin beds. For me, it's like living in your bedroom. Um, that's why I like the the G floor plan because it's four distinct living areas. But hey, I'm really uh, excited that you're you're thinking about that. Um, Um, this is kind of interesting. Uh, so Beyond Intentions has a question. Ever have the gray tank stuck on two thirds, clean it somehow? Um, it empties for me every time. And it's the last tank to empty or um, last tank to fill up. The black always fills faster. Um, what I would probably recommend is there's um, tank sensor cleaners. Um, usually it's a liquid. Um, you fill the tank pretty full and then you pour the stuff in. And then you let it kind of cook, maybe drive around for a little bit. Because you can't put ice down either the bathroom or the kitchen sink drain, you can't use the ice treatment, which works like magic every time. Um, but try that. Um, Thetford has one. Uh, there's quite a few out there. I really found one that does um, an off gray tank. It was um, because there's so much soapy water going in there, it cleans itself out pretty well. But um, about every third empty, what I do is I take the um, waste tank treatment pods, like the laundry pods. One goes in the toilet right into the tank, and the other one I break open and put some in the front uh, galley sink and the bathroom sink, and that works out um, really well. So it just kind of keeps the system um, pretty clean. So try that uh, um, gray tank sensor. Walmart would have it if, you need, if you're kind of in a pinch. Um, RV park stores or RV dealer stores um, would be a good source. Excuse me. My drips have almost stopped, but my mouth is dry. Great question. Um, let's see. Yeah, maybe we'll kind of get to this here pretty quick. Um, yeah, what are your thoughts on the new Travada water system uh, inside? So you have to have your doors open to be connected to city water and even fill your tank. Um, it's just... I. Mm. I don't. So stay tuned. I, I got I got some things to point out. Um, so let's do this. Uh, let's shift gears. Uh, let me just look over here real quick. Um, so we like to do headline news. Um, I just find this kind of stuff fascinating. I, I'm in a couple of um, RV news uh, groups here. And this is one. Um, this comes from our friends at RVnews.com. Um, the link is not on my website, but it will be tonight so you can see this. Um, so this is um, Go RVing did a big survey. And our Go RVing is kind of the RV industry um, marketing association, if you will. Um, they did a huge survey. And this is kind of not surprising, but the numbers are staggering. 30% of the workforce will be working from home several days a week by um, uh, the end of 2021, according to that survey. And 96% of employees desire some form of remote work environment. Now, when I jumped in my RV two and a half years ago, I said, hey, I'm going to go full time. I had to do a sales job on my boss and the CEO of the company and because it was weird. Um, I didn't really know much about it. There wasn't a whole lot of us doing it. But now, apparently, everybody wants to do it, uh, which is awesome. What I find really compelling here about this is that the campgrounds, communities, and RVs are really need to upgrade their amenities, their Wi-Fi, their meeting spaces, and their business centers. And I can't stress this enough. In fact, look at this next uh, slide I put in here. Um, and that is so true. The Wi-Fi at 99% of the RV parks I go to, useless. I mean useless. And if you're working from the road, you have to have solid RV. And look at this. I'm at a KOA in Spartanburg. And these are the stats from um, the um, speed test app I took when I was building out this um, uh, show this afternoon. That is 119 megabits down load from the cloud and 23 up. And I'm telling you folks, that is unheard of speed for an RV park Wi-Fi network. So these guys not only are adding 20 spaces in back, but they've invested correctly into their Wi-Fi infrastructure. Um, my recommendation, what I do all the time now is if their Wi-Fi sucks, I am vocal about it. 
And I talked to the manager about why do you even put Wi-Fi in if you can't even get it at your campsites? If you have to stand under an antenna or be in the laundry room to get Wi-Fi, take it off your advertising. It's fake false advertising. Um, so I would, if I was an entrepreneur, I would be talking to RV parks about solid Wi-Fi networks, community business space, even places where you can kind of run out of the community space for like a conference room meeting, something like that. Certainly as things continue back to normal, right? But I was just, I was so happy with this. I told this KOA in particular, they need to advertise this because I go to RV parks where there is Wi-Fi. The ones I've been to in the past, I go back because they have good Wi-Fi. This is the best I've ever seen. I was blown away. What do you think of this? Can you imagine getting 119 megabits download? I, I mean, you could buy, I, I, I updated everything on my devices, on my iCloud photos. It's just incredible. Um, it's just, it's so exciting. Um, so again, this, these um, will be on the um, website um, tonight. I'll put that news story on there for you. Okay. So let's uh, look at this one and bear with me here. And this, is kind of the uh, question of the night. So this uh, comes from Bill Appleton. Um, and Bill says, uh, love, love, love the channel. Thank you, Bill. Appreciate that a lot. A question, what do you think about the change Winnebago made in your floor plan by removing the small but very functional seating area by the uh, sliding door and replace it with the multi-purpose pedestal? And boy, uh, you all have had great questions about this tonight. I did a video at the RV Tampa Super Show in January. I did two videos. You've seen one. Excuse me. And um, I posted that and I was soft on, on my comments. And the next one, um, I was extremely harsh and very, very blunt. And the reason for that is they have ruined this floor plan. Um, let me give you a couple examples. The Volta training I did today um, was at, at a dealer that actually had a 2022 floor plan, a non um uh, non-Volta version, but nonetheless, it was a 22. So I was able to snap pictures for you. And what I want to do is kind of compare this in real time because uh, Bill is exactly right. The picture on the left is the new open space concept of the G floor plan. So the pedestal, what he's talking about there is the handle, um, which has a, a lagoon table mount slide. Uh, so the table where you see against the wall there um, behind the driver's seat can be then dismounted and then remounted to that pedestal. Um, on top of that pedestal, there is a little pop-up outlet. Um, and that's fine. But what they've removed is, if you look at my rig, uh, the ability to sleep another person or two. So you can travel for now in seat belt seats that look like car seats that are really very firm, very, I would say, almost uncomfortable. Um, and you can you can travel four now, which is cool, but you can only sleep two people, which is I don't know where the other two people are going to sleep if you actually are traveling with them. Uh, put them in the air mattress out back, or they a tent, I, the hotel. I don't know. Um, the um, go big screen again on this. Um, the 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 jump seat um, way undervalued in my opinion. Um, not only is a seat a seating position to watch movies. And if you saw my um, beach uh, Space Coast, uh, I show you how to do a uh, movie night in the van. And that jump seat is absolutely critical to that. The only other way with this new floor plan to watch TV is you have to get in bed. Um, I don't always want to be in bed. Um, and the you have to put the, the thing down so then you can't get to the hallway, your garage storage. It really kind of clams up the, the back of the van, in my opinion. Um, and then the, the other thing is, is you don't have to collapse the table to make a bed. What I'm trying to show here with the pillow on the jump seat is um, there's the piece of the puzzle that goes down by the door. And uh, when Kyle travels with me, I use this bed. I sleep up front. He sleeps in back. And uh, we sleep very comfortably. Um, and so you don't have to break down the bed. Um, you can't get five people around the other new table. You can't. The table doesn't extend out to four feet. Um, it's smaller. It's, it's just they, they just ruined the front lounge, in my opinion. Um, the other thing that's really interesting to point out um, that I did in the video that I posted is, zoom back out for you here, or zoom in, is if you look at the, the seats, the passenger seats in the back, they're sitting on this wood box, which is kind of what mine do, but mine have a very residential feel because the box has been wrapped in ultra leather, which if you look at the picture on the top there, um, 
of mine, you can see how nice and plush that looks like a residential piece of furniture versus this, hey, let's put some car seats on top of a wood box and every corner in that new rig is, uh, and if you bought one, I'm really happy for you. I, I mean, I, I bash you because it's, it's, it's so different than mine and maybe it will fit your needs exactly. So don't, please don't come, come across you're making a bad decision. I'm just pointing out things that I think they could have done better and differently to improve it, not necessarily take a back step. Anyway, um, all the corners are sharp. Um, here's another example. Um, one of you had asked about the doors. So what they've done is uh, they've removed all the water inlets from the side, which means you have to open your cargo go cargo doors to fill the water tank. Um, or if you want to use city fill, which uh, Trevada owner one of these group recommends not doing that. I don't do that. I fill the tank and then I empty my tank uh, because your tank capacity is limited. You can't, um, and by hearing the pump cycle, it just reminds you not to, to waste your water. But this is our fancy new system here, which is meant for the bigger RVs where you have the undercarriage um, storage where this stuff makes total sense. But imagine trying to fill your tank and it takes some time. It takes two, three, four minutes probably in the rain, in the snow, in the cold, with the bugs. I, I don't get this at all. I think they're just trying to re-commoditize a component they're using elsewhere. Um, or maybe there's some other reason. Let me show you this. I don't know. What do you think of this? Um, this one is a complete mystery to me. And let me zoom out or zoom in for you. Um, and I didn't really recognize this until I stood into it in this in this floor plan uh, later in the RV show. And what I'm showing you here, uh, the bigger picture with the blue, that is the 2022. Um, and mine have awning windows. This has a slide by side window, which is fine. Same same principle here. They've moved uh, the window from where my position is, which if you can see the bed is up and my little fan, the window is there. In the current configuration, not only does it look great from the outside, it's symmetrical on the on the driver's side of the van, but with the bed up, I still have light. I can reach that window ventilation. I can close that window for privacy or for a sunblock. Um, in the other one, when your mattress is up, you can't do any of that. You have to put your bed down to do something with the window. And my guess the thinking was, hey, if you're laying in bed, you want to look at the the view out the window. Well, unless you're like boondocking in the middle of the forest, you're gonna close your shade anyway for privacy. So this one's a complete mystery to me. I <laughs> just don't, don't get it at all. Um, if you know something about it, let me know. That one is a complete head scratch on me. Um, this one's kind whoops, this one's kind of interesting. Um, and one of you had mentioned this. So there's a bugaboo in the Travato community, in my opinion, that um, people complain about the shower drain. There's two filters associated with the shower drain in the 5090 um, shower. The first one's in the floor plan of the shower itself. And if you look like a, the aerator filter at your faucet, at your residential faucet, that's the kind of filter that was in the drain. And the minute you start pumping water through it, the thing plugged up. Learn that in the first shower. Every Travado owner does, unless they've been doing their research, um, because all the sediment stuff fills it up, and then your your water's puddling, up and you're like, "What's going on?" Um, the second filter is under the galley sink. It's easy to get to, but you have to empty out your contents of your galley cabinet under the sink, and it's kind of hard to get to. You have to unscrew this little thing, and there's this little fine mesh. It's the secondary filter. So people, you know, griped about the the the, the, the drain. So what they the, the, they call it the pump in the drain. The pump, the shower pump was the problem. So what they tried to do is eliminate the pump by having a gravity drain. The only way to get the water into the gray tank, because the gray tank configuration is raise this and run the plumbing under the under the floor. The problem is they raise it about four inches. Um, I am 5'10 and with my cowboy boots on 5'11, I could not stand up in this new floor plan. Um, and, and stand up and uh, use the toilet like a lot of guys like to do by standing. And here's the irony. They raise the shower floor to solve a shower problem. But if you're in there showering, you've got to do a shower thing like this, you probably won't shower in it. <laughs> That's what I find so mind boggling. What they could have done, should have done, is what every Travato G owner does is modify that floor 
pan shower drain. There's a 3D printed one um, that you screw on. I think Bean Intentions have one. I use, um, I don't have that. I have a um, cheesecloth that I put over the plastic screw off one. I've removed the, the, the faucet aerator style. So I use cheesecloth. I can get um, probably five showers out of that and I just throw that away. So they could have done that the 3d printed one um the other thing they could have done really easy is put the shower pump filter under the galley on on hose and then make a tilt out drawer kind of like the sponge thing your kitchen sink right so you can access that shower drain really easy the shower filter uh there really easily versus kind of the klutzy thing you have to unload your galley cabinet that would have been a much better solution. Keep the shower pump. There's nothing wrong with the shower pump. The problem is the filters, um, accessing and cleaning. Um, so again, it, you, you're going to be able to have a shower pump. But you're not going to be able to stand to go take uh, use the restroom or or stand to shower, which just boggles my mind. Um, I just I don't know. <laughs> I think I have one more in here, and this one to me is just like. I don't, I don't get it unless they did something in the back because they're doing Volta because you got rid of that big inverter box. So all the, and if, if the tanks, I, I need to look at this. If the tanks are still underneath, they had to move the, all the Volta stuff um, from the jump seat where mine is the inverter and um, all the, you know, the DC, DC inverter, all that stuff had to be moved. So my guess is they moved it all back under the bed. And this is why they did all this rearranging here. But what I'm pointing out in this graphic, let me zoom in so you can see this is uh, the position of the window exhaust. And this to me is pretty important because the left is the current 2022. Um, the right picture is mine. So you can see my exhaust is well behind the dinette uh, window. And why this is a big, and then I point out on mine on the, on the right where the uh, sewer hose went. So what they try to do on the right picture is reorient the exhaust to accommodate the sewer um, oops, I'm sorry. I thought I made this big for you. Um, accommodate the uh, the sewer hose because uh, now it won't go in the side. Again, I'm guessing because they're using that space for something else. So they had to move the exhaust. But if you're doing what I call a charge on demand, that's the Volta COD. That's where you run a charge cycle on pur on purpose. Um, um, sorry. Um, spam caller coming in. Um, what's going to happen is if, if, and I just did this this, this week. I was um, in a national uh, forest dry camping, there's no services. I ran a charge session because I was stationary for three days. I ran one uh, charge session one day and uh, the second day I ran two one hour charge sessions. But it was lovely weather so I could op open up my windows. If you're opening up your window, you run a charge session, all those fumes are coming right in your van. I, just, I know they thought about this, right? But that is a head scratcher too. I don't get that at all. So the net of that is I'm, I'm not really happy with what they did to it. I've, I've vocalized this to them. I'm hoping to meet them in June. Um, I don't want to burn any bridges, but um, I'll be quite frank with you. And for those of you that have bought the rig, I'm really excited for you. Maybe you don't know any better, so that's great. But I would actually not buy this floor plan again unless they change it back to the way it was. Um, it just looks um, – uh, I'm sorry if you burst your bubble. I really – I'm sorry do that to you um but there's just so many what were they thinking things and it just it just looks cheap to me um because of this uh using you know um ikea type plywood they're not using the technoform stuff which every corner is rounded it's just really luxurious feeling compared to the other one so so that's it so that's kind of answering the viewer question so um again um i'm really happy that you have purchased a wonder you have one in order, but it's a huge deal to me. And I just want to help them make it better because they could have done that without making these changes, which I, I, I still scratch my head. So what do you think about this? Is this, is this helpful at all? Um, that answer your questions. Um, again, I have really strong feelings and folks, I'm just scratching the surface. <laughs> I could go on for uh, two hours about this and, um, I want to call your attention to them because if you're trying to replicate the experience that I have, you cannot do it in this new this new layout and for the prices they're charging i think they you get you get less of um and um it made the used ones go up in value i think um and if you're really liking the the style that i have uh we need to let winnebago know that i would love to buy one but i'm not buying this until you make some of these corrections because they're pretty dramatic so i'm not
on my soapbox. I apologize. Okay, so let's look at some more um, viewer questions here. Uh, bear with me one second. Um, a few more viewer questions here. So, so hopefully it answers the, the viewer question of the week and many of you had the same qu type of question. So uh, I'm looking for your questions. Um, yeah, we talked about this, the water systems. Thank you for that. Uh, yeah, look at this. This is great. Um, not going to buy upgrade 20 until they bring the fourth sleeper back. I think that, and I was talking with the salespeople today at the um, Adventure Motorhomes. I think that the challenge is people don't think and spend time in these floor plans. They go in and they see this big cavern thing and they see two twin beds and they're like, oh, this feels open to us which it is open. But when you start actually thinking for that, you're going to be living in your bedroom. If you want to watch movies, you got to get in bed in the K floor plan. And um, you can only sleep two people in the K floor plan. You can sleep four in the G. There's just so many benefits, but everybody goes in and feels tight. And it kind of does, but when you start thinking about how you live in it, um, the, um, <laughs> the, um, the, the, um, the awesomeness of this floor plan really I'm, I'm sitting in the cab seat right now i mean I, I never sit here the other new the new one's going to force you to sit in the seat a lot where the ginger walkabout sits a lot um this is kind of funny look at this <laughs> um, beyond intentions yeah other brands to back a g floor plan it's so true um maybe we can put plant a seed with coachman right um yes this is a great one uh, elon musk uh, starlink and they keep putting satellites like crazy up in space right um I think Kevin thirty of a uh, thirty to wake up is is beta testing this. Um, I've thought about it. Um, I've got so many other things going on. Um, I need sure things, so I've got a video coming up about um, cellular data and the hotspot. So I've got so many videos coming up. Um, it's pretty amazing. Um, but yeah, that'd be awesome to have really good coverage uh, across the board. And hey, Eric, is it Eric? Um, if you're serious about this, let Winnebago know. Um, they have all kinds of forum feedbacks on there. Go to the Winnebago Travato uh, owners uh, Facebook and post this stuff because they are they do listen, uh, which is great. They, a lot of the improvements over the years were, were specific to um, owner input. Sumo springs are now standard. Um, the uh, roof, a uh, hole in the roof with a cap over it. So if you want to put a, a wire up to do a like a wee boost or something like that. So they do listen to their customers, which is awesome voice of the customer as they call it um so let them know hey i'm not buying this until you guys make some of these corrections and the other thing on the bathroom by the way not only did the floor get raised so you get less ceiling height they shorten the back they shorten the toilet they they raise the or they, they narrow the toilet uh, base by four inches and if you're kind of on the you know biggish size i mean now you're oh my god don't get me started sorry <laughs> um Oh, good. I'm glad it was helpful. I, I feel like I'm, I'm, um, I just want to make a better rig so you can have a better RV experience. And if you're trying to get what I have, which is the most amazing experience out of a rig, whether you're one or two persons in this with a pet, um, this is just an amazing floor plan. Um, yeah. Um, thanks. Uh, it's a huge decision, right? And there's, and you wait for so long that you want to make the right decisions. So um, it's pretty amazing. Um, let's see. Yeah. Uh, so this is. So I was a few times. I have not seen the Technoform the actual cabinet. I saved my. What uh, that tells me is it's not Technoform or they would have the Technoform badge on it. Lixon's called it Technoform, but that looked like Technoform to me. It looks like Ikea vinyl wrapped particle board <laughs> and it just looks inexpensive to me. Whereas the other one is looks very nice. Uh, so we'll see. Um, yeah, I, I think you're right here, beyond attention. Uh, fixing perceptions, not real problems. Um, yeah, and you have to spend time, as you say, to really understand these changes and how detrimental they are to the RV experience. Uh, simple things. There's no carpet in the in the cabinets. And I had one viewer say, well, it's going to be hard to clean a carpeted cabinet. Well, they don't really get dirty, number one. But the important thing of a carpeted cabinet, at least the top and the back, is you can tuck stuff in there. They, My clothes, they kind of stick like, almost like Velcro. 
all the, the dishes, all the stuff in my galley cabinet, I kind of wedge up against the carpet because it kind of grabs them. And so stuff doesn't slide around. I wish there was carpet on the floors like in the in the, um, in the coachman cabinetry because less stuff would shift even less. Um, so they, they just did things that for cost cutting is what it seems to me. Um, I don't have any validation of that, but the things they did just uh, perception versus uh, cost cutting. Yeah, Greg's kind of got the same opinion here. Confusing thing is a G floor plan is a great option, but everybody is copying the K. What is your opinion on that? <laughs> coachman should take notice that Winnebago's ruined the G. Yeah, I'm going to meet with the uh, with the Coachman team next. Uh, excuse me, in June. Um, we got a lot of plans to work. Um, do a lot of things with them. We're going to got a lot of plans. I can't announce it right now. Um, it'd be really fascinating because uh, the the K was easy to copy, and everybody's doing it to your point. And that's an opportunity for somebody to build a, G, a better G. Uh, absolutely, for sure. And why? Um, I would love to know the mix. I don't know. I'm guessing the K sold more and people walked into the G and it's like, oh, it's so cramped. And so they tried to make it more K-like to be open, but they removed so much functionality. Um, the reason I like the G is because it has a functional bathroom. I intended from day one to use my toilet, use my shower. And so having a space consumed by the bathroom made total sense. I was willing to give that up, um, that space. The bed's a four by six bed. It fits perfect. This and blah blah blah. So yeah, it's it's fascinating to me. Um, um, yeah, Talara's got some interesting in interesting um, uh, Eric uh, uh, concepts around that. They're trying to do some things a little Europeanish. I would agree with you there. So uh, you're asking about the the difference in the bathroom. It's it's if you look at their floor plan. Um, Maybe let me see if I can scroll really fast back up to the top. Um, it's super obvious in the um, in the floor plan diagram. The dramatic difference in the width of the bathroom. Uh, one second, I'm trying to get to the top of the stack here. Uh, right here. Uh, let me share that out. Uh, so what you're looking at here, so this is so if you go to Winnebago's uh, website, you see this floor plan, and you can see what they've done to the toilet area, which lit for ladies, not cool for guys, not cool if you're going to use your toilet. Um, it's really a tight fit now, and uh, you know their thinking was again they're trying to address their perception, in my opinion, which is the bed isn't wide enough. Well, you get a little more shoulder width, four inches worth, at great expense at a comfortable bathroom experience. Um, this way uncomfortable and this way uncomfortable and you still have to climb climb out of bed feet first so you don't really gain anything and then there's the slats on the bed which is just so unattractive um so yeah it's a mystery um i hope to chat with them i hope i didn't burn any bridges with them i love the class b team i, I know them uh we spent time together which is awesome um they showed me that i didn't burn any bridges but we've got to have them see the light here right just make a better rig i don't um uh, this is a great yeah the, the carpet helps reduce the rattles um let's see catching up on the stuff here um oh mnh thanks i appreciate that um love making videos my problem is i can't get them out fast enough uh, <laughs> it's um so this is an interesting question so eric they have a solus that's on a pro master the short version um it has a pop top so you can put the kids up there. Um, it's a different floor plan. And if you look at the new 59G versus the Solus, you'll see a lot of commonalities. They were trying to duplicate that to some degree. And I'm gonna close my window because it's getting cold. And um, so I doubt you'll see a Solus or a pop top on a Travado, but the Solus is available for you. Excuse me. And um, and that's, that's how you would solve that problem. But they've taken some of that from the, um, Solus and apply it to the uh, to the Travado, which I'm not a big fan of. Um, so this is kind of new. Dad says, um, as a parent, they need um, they need a seat like the Storyteller, three point seat belts safely, and those are really comfortable. By the way, the Storyteller ones, oh my gosh, those are the the, the kind of the jump seat that it's almost transformer seat. Um, Kevin Martin, thirty to wake up. He's test driving one for a couple more weeks. Um, Chad and Paul, if you don't follow their channel, uh, they moved out of their Travado um, KL into a Storyteller. They love it. They crow about that bed all the time. And the separate living spaces, which is what this floor plan 59G offers. And um, 
and now they get to experience that in real time uh, where the K doesn't really offer that. It's one big living in your living room and, um, and Kevin's getting to experience that himself. And he's out of his van all together too. So they both sold their Travados looking for something different, which is really interesting. Um, we're almost at the top of the hour. Keep your questions coming in. There's really some good ones in here. Um, so I want to do a shift gears just a little bit. Uh, let's see, bear with me one moment. Yeah, again, I just have to scratch my head. They should uh, just put belts in the passenger seat. And I mean, the, the automotive grade is a, is a tricky one because you have to, you know, for seat building and crash and blah, blah, blah. So I kind of, I get their approach, but they could have done it differently. Like the Heimer had a really nice looking seat. It was comfy, three point seat belts. This to me looked like a quick fix. Um, to address, again, a perception, I would be curious how many people are actually putting passengers in the, in the, you know, the dinette seat. And unless you're taking the grandkids out for a day at the park, you have nowhere to put them. Um, <laughs> if they're staying the night, which is kind of funny. Um, okay, let's um, let me shoot over here quick. Um, keep, keep the questions coming in. We're going for about another, we might go over this tonight. I've been a little wordy on the uh, viewer question of the week around the nine G floor plan changes. Uh, folks, is this helpful at all? If you get anything out of it, give a thumb up. I got a lot of viewers live tonight, which is great. Um, this uh, program is picking up in popularity, which I love to see. Um, I just love the interaction. Um, and many of you have kind of much you like this format. Okay, uh, format. <laughs> it's been a long day. Format. Okay, here is viewer recommendation of the week. Are you ready for this? This is so great. This comes from um, Sue F. She's made a number of recommendations, and this is an awesome recommendation. I actually thought of doing a video about this before she brought this up. I was not aware of this. So her recommendation is get a uni pass for toll roads. You can see on the, the United States there, and they kind of the southern and northeast half of the country, kind of Illinois east, then down through Florida one. Um, that's going to be South Carolina not participating. Um, is get a, a pass that uh, for toll roads gets you through all those tolls with one single toll thing. Um, and this is genius because what I have, I have three, and that's where I was going to make a video about this. I have Florida, I have Texas, and I have Illinois. And it's a, it's a, not a nightmare because you just have to have more stickers on. But this one piece of hardware allows you to travel through all those states with one bill. This is genius. I'm probably going to get this and cancel my, my Florida Sun Pass and my Illinois Easy Pass. Texas, I still got to have it. Um, this is on my site now, um, gosmalllivelarge.com on my um, Amazon store uh, called Shop. And get this. It was only like 12 bucks or something like that. Then you prepay um, the charge. But if you travel in these states, Sue, thank you so much for this recommendation. I love it when the viewers give recommendations. I don't know everything. Many of you know way more than I do. And that's what the purpose of this program is, is to share this stuff out. This is just a genius idea. And um, I'm going to get this. And um, I'll let you know how it is. Because um, I might try and get it before I go to those other states where I'm headed to. So maybe we'll try and work on that this next couple of weeks. So here down at the bottom, if you could help me out, um, you're looking at your iPad. You're looking at your phone. You're looking at your computer screen right now. You probably have email available. See the email address there at the bottom? I need you folks to swamp that email address with your viewer recommendation. Um, not questions about stuff. That needs to go here or another place on my on my website. Um, but same with pet pick of the week, pet photo of the week, and song of the week. So um, I, this is your chance. Um, Beyond Intentions turned me on to their coffee press. That's where this came from. So uh, this is your chance to curl about something you like with your RVing experience. And again, thank you, Sue, for recommending this. I'm going to try this out. And if you travel out these states, because tolls, let me tell you, if you go through toll booths, like in California, they are vicious. They will send you to collections. I've had this happen for violating, and you're going fast, and you don't have the, the, the little fob thing there you can see on the screen. And so they and and the bills go to a, a the address where the license plate is associated with, which is a you know home base in Florida. I never see it. Looks like junk mail. So all of a sudden I'm getting collection calls and I'm like, whoa. <laughs> so avoid all that. And that was going to be the purpose of my toll pass video, but this is actually much better. Thank you, Sue, for um, showing that to us. Um, which then. Um,
kind of brings us to our, our song of the week. And this is why we need you to bring your, get your recommendations in here. Um, I stumbled across um, Chris Christofferson. This is my uh, song of the week uh, submitted by me. Um, if you have Apple Music, they have um, Chris Christopherson Essentials. Uh, he made some super powerful songs. And he was actually a songwriter uh, in Nashville. And then he kind of got tucked into um, singing uh, by Johnny Cash and Willie Nelson and Waylon Jennings. And that was kind of the, um, the highwayman. Um, but this me and Bobby McGee, um, what made this song famous is Janis Joplin. But he wrote this, he sang it. And if you haven't listened to this song in a while, and if you have access to Apple Music, go there, uh, type in Chris Christopherson, listen to the essentials. Uh, there's like 12 songs on there. It's so fantastic. He's such a gifted um, songwriter and then a singer too. So check that out, Chris Christopherson, which is pretty amazing. And um, this is our pet pick of the week coming up right here. And this comes from Sandy. Sandy's in a class C and this is Rose. A Pyrenean Mastiff? I have no idea how to say that, if I did that right or not. But um, Sandy said in her email that uh, the dog, she's in a class C, and the dog was longing to get back on the road and go on a trip. <laughs> so um, we just love pet photos. I, I miss Van Life Luke so much, and uh, we're thinking about getting another cat, which is amazing. Um, they bring such joy that I never knew when I was uh, solo before Luke how much a pet enriches an RV experience. And the cool thing about pets, and I didn't realize this until after Luke, is that it gives me a reason to go talk. You know, you take him for a walk, right? It's a reason to go meet your neighbors. Um, if I'm kind of walking around with a beer in my hand, hobnobbing with the folks who are kind of like, this guy's creeping on me, right? Pets change that. They will not see me first. They're going to see the pet first, and they're going to say hi to the pet. Then they're like, oh, hey, pet owner. And it's just a, what a nice breaker. So that's probably one reason I would um, get another pet, uh, probably a cat. Um, I just love cats. So again, do a recommendation um, down there at the bottom. If you can help me out, flood that email box with pet picks, song of the picks, viewer recommendation. That would be really, really great. Um, uh, please reserve your question of the week for the channel comments here um, so everybody can see that. Um, that would be great. And so it's GSLL viewer recommendation at gmail.com. That's the, there. All right, we might go over a few minutes uh, tonight. So let's see what other questions we have here. Again, if you're getting anything out of it, give a thumb up. Sure, appreciate that. And comment below. Has this been helpful? What are your thoughts on the 59G? Um, are we going to flood Winnebago with a bunch of input? <laughs> yes. And if you have one in order, I'm really excited for you. I, seriously, you won't know what I have, so you'll be fine. You know, it's when you, you don't know what you don't have, you don't miss it, right? Um, I'm just excited you made a decision and getting on the road. That is, to me, that's... That is way more important than waiting for Winnebago to, you know, remedy some of these things. Um, let's see. Um, uh, so this is an interesting question here. Uh, so Eric says, yeah, the uh, Solus is kind of utilitarian, not as home-like. Totally agree with you. And that's kind of the the, the wood, um, the starkness of it. Um, Get shadows in the background. Um, Sparks guy, what do you think about the extended warranty on new class B uh, that takes the chassis and house warranties out to five years? Um, I think they're good. I bought one on my ProMaster chassis because um, at 49,000 miles, I had the head gasket or the head cylinder head go. So that made me nervous. So um, so I bought one. It was um, 1800 bucks for unlimited mileage for two years. Um, but I also bought the extended warranty on the whole van. Um, I should have re rethought that, which I guess any time it goes for five. Um, so I don't know. It's, it's kind of a mixed bag, right? Um, uh, you know, I just err on the, you know, if you have the resources, just spend a few extra bucks because peace of mind is really what, what it boils down to. <laughs> Beyond intentions. Yeah. I, I, um, love this new, yeah. Love the version. And so they're in a uh, GL, and they're the coolest people. They got the greatest cat. Um, uh, let's see, a couple more passes here. Uh, yeah, it covers 18 states. It's just incredible. Thank you for that. Um, it's so I'm going to get one. I'll, I'll uh, we'll do a video on that because I did not was not aware that was available. Pretty cool stuff. And um, yeah, uh, travel dream says. Get a cat. Yeah, probably get a cat. Get a kitten. Start them off early. They'll never know any difference, right? 
um, as long as they don't, um, as long as they don't scratch the upholstery, which I was worried about. Um, Luke never did. Um, he kind of does like the claw thing, right? Or if he gets scared or feels he's slipping, then he would grab with his claws, but very few issues. But there is actually this tacky paper that sticks to the upholstery and st is sticky on the other side. And we bought it, never used it. I actually returned it. Um, and what that does, it makes the cat not want to touch that surface uh, to claw. And um, so that stuff's available. So there's a lot of ways you know, to train them. Um, yeah, this is a great point. Uh, so he says, RVing with pets would make a great future video. Maybe we'll go to the uh, shelter together, do a YouTube live, and help you have you guys out and help me pick out a cat. Wouldn't that be crazy? Um, RH, thanks for taking all the all the feedback. Um, saw the review about it. Anyway, hey, I am super happy for you. Um, seriously, you could you could trade these things out, right? Um, I don't think you can lose any money on a, on a Class B RV right now. Um, they're hard to get. You're waiting for months. So the whole thing is just to get your adventure underway. Um, the rest will just play out over time, right? Um, let's see if there's a couple more appointments in here or appointments. Uh, so Glover Jan says, um, I like the white tears of the new class B's. Let my coach from beyond. Or the cabinet fell off while boondocking. Well, that's not good because <laughs> the cabinetry is one of the coolest parts in there about the, um, about that. Uh, let's see if my moon, you can't see my moon yet. It's not going to get dark enough. Um, of that, of the beyond and the Noah for that matter. Um, so glad to know that you have a, an appointment to fix it in May. That's awesome. Um, yeah, there's a whole bunch of uh, warranty stuff. So Kathy's got a good point. I'm pretty certain the Winnebago has a commercial fleet warranty on Ram chassis, five years, 100,000 miles. I've heard others talk about that on the Winnebago. Um, the Toronto owner and, and wannabes uh, Facebook group. Um, I haven't spent a lot of time researching it, obviously. I just spent money on it. But that's probably true. Um, so thank you for that. Okay, well, what we're going to do is call a wrap for tonight. Thank you, each and every one of you. Uh, next week, again, we're having uh, Heather from the Tax Queen to talk with her today. Um, slight caveat, she's going to be in kind of rural Oklahoma, but she thinks she's going to be able to pull this off. Um, I've uh, worked with her, met her at the RV Entrepreneur Summit, where this comes from, in March of 2019. She's an awesome gal. And an income tax preparation and accountant for RVers, whether you're in business or just looking to um, understand how to do your, your taxes better as an RVer. So you'll want to join us um, 6 p.m. Central. Um, April 28th, and you can ask, she's um, going to try and stay for the whole hour, which is amazing. So we'll devote a lot of the time to that. It's a really big topic. As you know, the IRS extended out a month. If you have to pay, you still have to pay. <laughs> but um, I'm this close to having mine done, and uh, you'll want to see that for sure next week. Um, so that will say thank you for joining uh, tonight, the live session, and this will post right away. And um, Thank you for watching the replay and thanks to each and every one of you for really for being out there and joining us. And uh, you have no idea how much you enrich my RV experience and just drive me forward. We have so many great things coming up. Check the website. Um, I'm going to be using an event tool. Hoping to have a, a channel um, roundup posted next week. I'll do it next week, but posted probably tomorrow. Um, I mean, we just planning some van -burries. How can we get together and do some campouts um, in like Nashville? And we're definitely going back to Wallace, Idaho. That was just so much fun. Um, maybe even Arizona. We'll go to the uh, um, Cattle Rest um, <laughs> RV stop with a, has a saloon associated with it. Um, anyway, thank you very much. We'll say uh, that again. And until we see you soon, wish you a journey on. Bye.